So earlier this week, I wanted to test whether the Intel HD 530i GPU was really as bad as integrated GPUs have proven to be in the past. And lo and behold, I was surprised when I saw this chip getting playable FPS in games such as Grand Theft Auto V. So with this knowledge, I sought out to test it as an emulation device in itself, to see if this redundant part of my CPU was capable of replacing the consoles from last generation beforehand, with games that we would all be familiar with and that would push it to its limits. Up first, we have Dolphin Emulator, an incredibly well-coded emulator and optimized extremely well. The most piece of hardware that is. As we can see here, Super Mario Galaxy 2 is running a smooth 60 FPS average, only ever dipping down to 57 FPS once. As one of the more intense and more popular Wii games, it'd be safe to say that Wii emulation is very capable on this iGPU. The chip is running at enhanced settings with 1.5 times the native resolution, giving us a greater picture than that of the standard Wii console. So far, the chip is beating even a last gen console. Testing the GameCube functionality of Dolphin Emulator next with The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. The game was a 30fps lock, however this did not detract from the game's playability at all. The game looked great with three times the native resolution of a GameCube console, and the game didn't drop any frames at all as you ran around the island. Later gameplay was very much respected of this clip, and 30fps remained constant throughout our entire time playing. Next up is PCSX2, the PS2 emulator. We're currently running on the most intense games that was available for the standard PS2 console, Metal Gear Solid 3. Truly a feat of software engineering considering what they pulled off on just a standard PS2. With an average of 50 FPS due to the PAL region lock, the game rarely ever dipped below this, only hitting 46 FPS once as our minimum. We ran the game at two times the native resolution to give the game just a little boost in aesthetic appeal. Even so, the chip powered through this with great ease and the game was completely playable, even more so than the PS2 version. It was only fair that we test out the original PlayStation console next. Metal Gear Solid was capable of pushing every ounce of power the original console had, similar to Metal Gear Solid 3 on the PS2 in fact, so it makes sense to test it here. Running a stable 60fps on average at the default NICE settings on EPSXE, the game was perfectly playable with minimums only ever dipping to 57fps, so most games on the original PS1 console would be playable. Of course, the main competitor of the PlayStation, the Nintendo 64 console, with a much more powerful and complicated architecture. However, their Intel HD 530 powered through this with ease, even with enhancements made to the game such as 2x anti-aliasing and 60x antroscopic filtering. We used Project 64 as our emulator here and Ocarina of Time to test it out. It looked great and ran floors to match at a locked 30fps. More advanced games would be capable of matching the same kind of performance seen here, as the HD 530 didn't even break a sweat emulating this console. Finally, not much of a challenge, but the SNES was an amazing console for its time and came out with some great games. Running it at the increased 720p resolution with emulated scanlines so had a little bit of extra appeal, the game ran at a locked 60fps and only ever dipped down to minimums of 59. Very true to the original NES console and completely playable, you must check out some of the amazing games that came out on the SNES. Finally, DESMU underscore ME, a fairly shit emulator to say the least. However, even so, the Intel HD 530 powers through this like a champ, running the game at the enhanced resolution of 720p with anti aliasing enabled. We saw a return of 60fps in Pokemon Diamond, and it ran flawlessly. You could likely expect many other games to run in a very similar manner. So, how do I feel about this iGPU in terms of emulation? Well, it must be said. It has low power consumption and it's paired with the great FPS this gives us in gaming. Its rendering at fantastic for emulation would likely be well suited for a low power, low space HTPC build. If I did have one minor negative out the chip, it does not support DirectX 12, running it obsolete in emulators to come that will likely want to take advantage of the low level APIs. Well, thank you very much for watching. Good night!